And so it begins, my Israel diaries. Last year, I spent three months traveling through Europe. My journey started in Portugal, and from there, I mostly took trains, buses, and sometimes a plane to get to the next destination. In these months, I also visited Spain, Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, and Montenegro. In this first video, I will mostly focus on the first chapter and the first country I visited, which is Portugal. I want to talk to you about these three months of traveling and I'm going to act like this is my visual diary so you feel like you joined me on this trip. I've always loved keeping memories and so I try to hold on to every receipt and train ticket I get my hands on. I brought two travel journals with me, one for writing and one for painting and so this video will be an artsy travel video as well. If you want to learn more about how an artist travels with her art supplies or if you need inspiration for you, what you can bring on your own trip, you should definitely continue watching. But first, I would like to give you some background information. I have always had this dream of traveling around on my own for a bit and bring both a travel journal and a sketchbook to document my surroundings. And so it was time to go. The reason why I decided to travel is because my previous job, working within a communications team for a hospital, didn't fulfill me and I wanted to leave my environment for a while. And I wanted to do it by myself because, first of all, three months is a long time to travel. You can't work at an office or go to university and travel at the same time. Unless you find a way to make it work, of course, by being a digital nomad. The second reason is that I like traveling by myself, or even better, I like being on my own. As an introvert, I usually recharge by spending time by myself and I have a lot of hobbies that keep me busy. I do like hanging out with other people as well, but that's one of the things I like most about traveling solo. I get to decide to spend one afternoon or evening with new people and go on a solo adventure the next day. I like that variety. One thing that I loved about this trip is that I couldn't think much about the future or make any long-term plans at all. I can't be quite an overthinker, so this made me feel so much at ease. The first city I visited in Portugal was Porto, and I really like this city. If you're thinking about planning a city trip here, maybe even a solo one, I definitely recommend it. It's pretty walkable and it's so charming. A nice day trip from Porto is to visit the Douro Valley. The Douro Valley is known for its many fine yards and beautiful landscapes. I booked a group tour. We explored the area with a bus and a boat. We obviously visited fine yards as well and we were able to drink some wine and eat lunch here. This is a very nice way to meet new people on your trip. Of course, you never know what kind of people will join the tour and it can be a bit awkward at first because you're solo, but most of the time more solo travelers will join tours. When you don't have a car or a driving license, I think this is a pretty good solution for exploring a place and meeting new people at the same time. That's what I did. I want to talk a bit about my journals. As you can see by now, I love bringing my travel journals on a journey. Ever since I was a kid, I have been obsessed with diaries and I especially love keeping visual diaries because they're so much fun to make and fill and to flip through hundreds of pages of your memories. I started painting in them a couple of years ago and I never want to stop doing it because, well, first of all, I think it's a beautiful thing to capture a memory, not only with your phone, but by really taking the time to document it. You remember so much more, or maybe the memory is more vivid, and as a painter you observe a lot of details. Details that would otherwise probably be lost in pictures. After spending a couple of days in Porto, I took the train to Lisbon. Since I had some spare days, I also took the time to explore nearby places. This was in April, and the weather was really nice. The sun was bright, it felt like summer already. I painted these colorful pages in my sketchbook. You will see this traditional yellow tram everywhere in Lisbon. I didn't take it, but it is definitely something that locals do and tourists are quite fond of it as well. Overall, I thought the people in Portugal were so kind. I met some lovely people in Porto and I even met up with the same girl in Porto and Lisbon because our travel schedules lined up. Over a month later, we met up again in Rome, so that was one surprisingly fun thing to happen in my first week of traveling. So right now, I am working on a painting of tiles inspired by the azurios that you will find everywhere in Portugal. You can see the tile work installations in a lot of public settings. Think of train stations, churches, museums, libraries and concert halls. It's so gorgeous to look at and I definitely felt inspired by it. So much so that I decided to paint some patterns with gouache. A couple of months ago, I uploaded a full video of me painting these tiles, so if you're eager to see that and learn more about Azurios, I would recommend you to check that out. 
The medium that I use is called gouache paint. I have talked about this medium before, but it's one of my favorite paints to use because the paint is very opaque and it has a rich pigment. I brought Winter and Nielsen Designers gouache with me. You can re the paint with water once it has dried, unlike acrylics paint, so if the paint has dried on your palette, you're able to reuse them. That is convenient, but it could also be tricky when you're carrying your sketchbook with you during your travels. You have to protect your book in case it gets wet. That risk is always there, especially when you're backpacking, so I usually brought an umbrella and a rain cover for my back, just in case it was needed. I don't mind if books show a bit of damage after a trip. I think it's the charm of carrying a travel journal with you as well. You can find this dreamy castle in Sintra. It's a dreamy place one hour away with a train from Lisbon. If you have a spare day, it's definitely a good getaway trip because this place is known for its castles, palaces and the natural beauty of its surrounding mountains. Of course, I wanted to paint it. I also took some time to walk around and see the inside of this national palace. It is a remarkable place and definitely a nice town to visit when you have the time while exploring Portugal. I think you could spend two days here as well if you want to visit the small town and all castles and pretty places nearby, but it's not a need. Just make sure you spend your time well and go here early in the day because it can get quite crowded. To avoid long waiting lines, I recommend booking your visit for the Palace of Pina in advance. I felt like this sketchbook spread wasn't finished yet, so I grabbed my portable printer that I bought especially for this trip and I printed a picture from my phone. This is the Canon Zomini printer. I really like bringing it with me and using it because it is a lightweight printer and the picture prints as a sticker, so you can immediately put it somewhere or maybe you can give it to a new friend that you meet during your travels. I often get the question how much time I spend painting in my sketchbook and if I paint exactly on the spot. Of course, it depends for every piece, but I usually spend 5-10 to 10 hours painting one spread. So you should know that this is not an easy sketch for me. It's not something I can do between 10 and 30 minutes. That could definitely work as well though. I just like to spend some more time on my paintings because I like them to be finished pieces. But if you don't have the time and energy to do this, spending 5 or 10 minutes or however long you've got is perfectly fine as well. Since I spend that long on a drawing, I usually don't work in front of a spot all the time. I try to start a sketch in front of a place I want to capture. Eventually, I will take a picture and finish painting indoors. When I was in Lisbon, I also met up with my niece. At that time, she was studying in Lisbon and it was really fun to meet up with a familiar person in a different country. We spent a couple of hours together and she showed me some parts of Belém, a neighborhood in Lisbon. Belém has a lot of museums, tourist attractions like the Belém Tower and the Geronimus Monastery. You're also able to visit the LX Factory, which is kind of like a cultural spot for vintage and art lovers. You can wander around here to see art studios and fun stores or to have a drink and something to eat. So this was part one of my in-trail diaries. In the next video, I will show you more of multiple cities in Spain and Italy. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I hope to talk to you soon. Let me know if you have any other questions about in-trailing, solo traveling or travel journaling as well. Bye bye.